All right, let's get to your phone calls at 217-629-7970 and uh, get to your reaction. Three different lawsuits filed in court, two of them in state court, one of them in federal court challenging Illinois' gun ban and registry. And you can chime in on this at 217-629-7970. That's the best way to comment live and local. Listen, I'm uh, here running all this myself. I've got, uh, of course, uh, comments that are coming in on uh, YouTube or Facebook, and I, I can't address all of those comments. So the best way for you to chime in here is at 217-629-7970. You call in, I put you on the air, and uh, we go from there. So 217-629-7970. But uh, if you're just now tuning in, earlier this morning, we um, reviewed three different lawsuits that have been filed challenging Illinois' gun ban and registry. One was filed in Crawford County, and that was from Thomas Mag, and you can hear that interview I did with him at the uh, YouTube channel, Bishop on Air, you'll be able to find that. Uh, But uh, that particular lawsuit, uh, they're asking for relief uh, to have the courts essentially uh, find that it uh, violates the Second Amendment, Fifth Amendment, and Fourteenth Amendment. Uh, But then you also have a lawsuit that was filed in Effingham County uh, from Attorney Thomas DeVore, and we talked with him as well. And if you missed that conversation, uh, you can find that on my YouTube page as well. Uh, Tom DeVore's case actually deals deals with uh, representing uh, more than 860 individuals all across the state. Uh, in that case, uh, they're looking for injunctive relief and actually have a, uh, a an emergency hearing this morning in Effingham County. Again, those are two different state-level challenges. Uh, but then overnight, you had the Illinois State Rifle Association. They filed a challenge in the Southern District of Illinois uh, in federal courts, and they're looking for the measure to be blocked uh, from being implemented. But the measure's in effect now. You've got three lawsuits that have been filed. A fourth lawsuit's expected from another group in federal court. So two state court, two federal court, four altogether. Your thoughts at 217-629-7970. Good morning. You're on WMAY. Yeah, Greg. I just wish that some of these people would, you know, legislators, governor, they know they're doing something that's unconstitutional. Somehow, some way, they need to pay for this. This is ridiculous. And what they're trying to do is bleed the NRA and all these people dry of money going to court. It's ridiculous. They need to be pushed out of office. He needs to res- the governor needs to resign for signing it. I'm sorry, but that's the way it should be. And all these people who are doing this, they need to resign as well because they're breaking our constitutional rights, and they know it. Appreciate the call. Uh, I will say, I mean, we have elections every two years, uh, and every two years you get uh, to vote on who's going to represent you at the Illinois State House, uh, and uh, it depends on every four or two years whether you get to vote on a uh, uh, a state senator. But I think too often uh, we find ourselves in a situation where uh, the the general public doesn't necessarily get as engaged as they may want to be. Listen, life happens. We get inundated with things, uh, and we typically don't get uh, to the point of being outraged until, well, it's being called for a vote on the House or the Senate floor, and then moments later, it's being signed by the governor. That's exactly what happened with the, uh, the, the measure to ban certain types of rifles and magazine capacities in Illinois. Uh, so that was signed Tuesday last week, January 10th. Uh, it took more than a week for lawsuits to ultimately be filed, or I guess right around a week, because you had lawsuits lawsuits that were filed, two of them in state court uh, Tuesday, and then late Tuesday you had the lawsuit filed by the Illinois State Rifle Association. Uh, so what do you think about all of this? 217-629-7970. That's the phone number here on WMAY. Uh, looking here, uh, Bishop on Air, somebody commented on YouTube saying, Sheriffs are showing us uh, a double standard in the rule of law by not a- arresting Pritzker. Uh, and uh, others going on to say that uh, everyone needs to call their sheriffs and demand that they arrest politicians who violate their uh, uh, rights. You've got others who are uh, chiming in uh, saying that I could just address all the comments on YouTube. Listen, I, I appreciate that. Uh, I'm a one-man show. Uh, it's best to call in live and local at 217-629-7970 like this individual and then I'll put them on air. Uh, good morning. You're on WMAY. Good morning, Greg. Yeah, I'm going to take a wild guess. And I believe that um, that the, the ban part of the law is probably going to stay 
Um, but I believe all the other parts of it are probably unconstitutional. And I say that just because of history that we've had one before, and there's like eight or nine other states that already have a ban. But the whole registration process, I believe, is unconstitutional. My question is, what stops someone from going to a neighboring state or another state and buying one and driving back with it and having it here? Does that... Does this law stop that? That's a great question. Uh, listen, I think uh, if you were to go to Missouri before this law was passed and you provided your Illinois driver's license, they likely would ask for your FOID card. I don't know if that means that they have to comply with Illinois law over in Missouri when it comes to giving an Illinois resident a firearm. That's a great question I can't answer. But one thing I do know is this law has carve-outs in it. Uh, and one carve-out says that uh, non-residents traveling through the state don't have to comply with the ban on certain types of weapons. They have to make sure that the weapon is unloaded and in a case, but they can travel through the state and have possession of that so-called assault weapon uh, and be in the bounds of the law. Uh, But you've also got others who are carved out of this, including law enforcement, retired and current, plus others in the law enforcement and security space. And that's one element of Tom DeVore's case, saying that uh, this law banning guns, carving out law enforcement, uh, violates the uh, equal protections of uh, our rights. Uh, so I appreciate the call. I don't know if that answered your question, but uh, a good one uh, for sure. And there's a lot about this uh, that needs to be unpacked even further and have some lawyers to d- deal with all of this. And we're going to have the lawyers deal with it in court because three different lawsuits filed, two in state court, one by the Illinois State Rifle Association overnight. Uh, in federal court, we're expecting another one to be filed in federal court. And we'll be on top of this for you moving forward. It is Springfield's Morning News on WMAY. From the Fly SPI Studios, take the easy way.